Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this discussion, we are going to go over the build an atom simulator that we will be using for one of the labs in our class. Now, if you're up at this screen, you just want to click on the play button to go ahead and start it or you may start directly with this. And we'll see that there's three different sections here that you could be looking at during the lab. So let's take a quick look at each one and just take a look at the controls. First for build an atom. Now here you can build your own atom and you'll see that we have the various different components of the atom, the protons here and the neutrons, which will make up the nucleus of the atom and the electrons here, which will be around in the clouds around it in the orbitals. We have the periodic table up to the left hand side here that we can look at. And that shows the different elements. And then we can look at things like net charge if it is going to be an ion and the mass number of the atoms. We can open those up if you want. Now we can also click on stable unstable to find out if this atom that we make is stable or unstable. So let's go ahead and make a quick atom here and let's clear off what we've written on the screen. And let's go ahead and take a look at these. So if we put one proton in, we drag one proton into the nucleus. We have hydrogen, which is a stable atom. Now we also note that it's an ion because it has a net charge of plus one. The proton has a positive charge of one, but we have no electrons in this atom to make it a, a stable, a, I mean, sorry, to make it a neutral atom. So we can add one electron and now it's still hydrogen, but it has a net charge of zero. The mass number being one is the number of protons and neutrons in the atom. Now we can add a neutron to that too. We add a neutron, we still have hydrogen. Note that it's showing you what element up in the upper right here we have, and we still have hydrogen. And that's because there's still only one proton in the nucleus. The, new, the neutron has no charge, so it did not change our net charge, but it did change our mass number. And our mass number is now two, because we have two particles in the nucleus. Let's add another. Let's pick a proton in there. So now we have changed the atom. By adding a proton, that changes the atom. It gives it, makes it a helium ion. In this case, an ion, because now we have two positive charges in the nucleus, but only one negative charge around. So let's go ahead and add that second one in there. And there we have a neutral helium atom. Now this is an isotope of helium. It's not the normal helium that we use to fill balloons. It's actually a slightly lighter version because it has a mass number of three. If we added another neutron, then we would get the standard helium that we're used to. And we can keep adding things here. Let's go ahead and add another proton. And now we have lithium. Now notice it moving around. That means it's an unstable isotope. So this is one that would then decay into something else. It will not remain in this form. So you cannot have lithium with three protons and two neutrons. Now there are stable versions of lithium. And we can do that by adding one more neutron. Now it becomes stable. So you can play around with this to see the various different types of atoms that you can create and kind of get an idea of the differences between the atoms and looking at the different isotopes that can form and the different ions that can form as well. Now the second thing we look at is the symbols. So here we see we can build an atom again, but now we're looking at the symbol. So the chemical symbols for these. So we can stick one proton in there again, and now we have hydrogen. And we can see that it has, for example, uh, we have the element hydrogen up here, and we can see the symbol down here with the positive charge. So it has one proton, it has a mass of one, and it has a symbol of H for hydrogen and it has a plus one charge. We can make it neutral again. Only thing that changes is makes it neutral. So this is now a zero. So this is the typical hydrogen atom that makes up most of the universe. Let's make something a little bit bigger. We can make helium. We can make lithium. And let's see that these are all very unstable. But let's go ahead and make carbon. So now we have a carbon atom. Well, it's very unstable because carbon needs some neutrons. Let's put those in there too until we can get to a stable isotope here. 10. And there we have the standard carbon isotope. That is carbon 12. The carbon that makes up our bodies is typically carbon 12. And that is a stable isotope of carbon. 
Now we see here it has an atomic number of six that tells us how many protons are in the nucleus. It has an atomic mass of 12. That's the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. It has a charge of plus five because we haven't put in the electrons yet. So let's add in the rest of those electrons and make it a neutral atom. And we can push that charge down to zero. So now we have a neutral atom of carbon 12. So a few different things you can look at here and this shows it with the chemical symbol hopefully giving you a little bit better understanding of how that symbol works. Now the last thing you'll look at is the game. So which game do you want to play? Well it's there's several different ones here for you to do. We'll go ahead and turn one on here and now your idea is to find the element. So what do we see here? We see two protons that tells us it is the second element in the periodic table. So hydrogen is the first helium is the second therefore that is helium and now it's asking you is this a neutral atom or it is in an ion? Well you'd look here it has two positive charges and two negative charges that makes it neutral. So you can do that and then check and yes you're correct. So it gives you a game and a way to be able to start and play with these different things and there's several other different games. I'm not going to go through all the details. You can turn on the timer if you want if you want to give yourself a bigger challenge on that. So that concludes this discussion on the build an atom lab and simulator that we will use for this class. We'll be back again next time to discuss another one of our labs. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.